South Side of Chicago, Urban Renewal. Chicago was incorporated as a town in 1833 and in 1837 was declared a city when its population reached 4,000, but has now grown to almost 3 million with 8.88 million in the metropolitan area. In 1884, the nation's first skyscraper was built on LaSalle and Adams. Chicago was also the birthplace of many firsts. The refrigerated rail car, mail ordering retailing, the car radio, the TV remote, and the first self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction ushering in the atomic age took place in the University of Chicago in 1942. The 1,451-foot Willis Tower, formerly known as the Sears Tower, completed in 1974, was the tallest building in the world from 1974 to 1998. Daniel Burnham, an architect and urban designer, was the main designer for the new plan of Chicago in 1906, which was then published in 1909. With partner Edward H. Bennett, they came up with the plan of Chicago as a general plan for the city of Chicago, which was originally founded in 1832. The plan of Chicago hoped for activities of the city to be distributed in an efficient manner. The plan was designed to bring entertainment and art to the already cultured city. However, this plan did not include the south side of Chicago or the west side. The South Side of Chicago has always been known for its poverty, violence, and blackness. From the great migration of freed slaves from the South to the North, black people have been forced into poor living conditions and poverty with little to no way out. The migration meant more economic opportunities, less racism, and a better life. But after generations of oppression, black people still faced all disparities and disadvantages. When black people came to the North seeking better treatment, they were in turn placed in ghettos where only black people were able to live and had little to no economic opportunities, which was often known as the Black Belt. The near south side of the city became the first black residential area as it had the oldest, less expensive housing. Although restricted by segregation and competing ethnic groups, such as the Irish, gradually continued black migration caused this community to expand as well as the black neighborhoods on the near west side. These were de facto segregated areas. After World War II, the city built public housing for working class families to upgrade residential quality. The high rise design of such public housing proved a problem when industrial jobs left the city and poor families became concentrated in these facilities. After 1950, public housing high rises anchored poor black neighborhoods such as the south and west of the Loop. In 1919, the Chicago race riot erupted in what became known as Red Summer when other major cities also suffered mass racial violence based on competition for jobs and housing as the country tried to absorb veterans in the post-war years. During the riot, 38 people died, 23 black and 15 white, and over 500 were injured. This cycle of segregation, unfair treatment, prejudice within society, and especially Chicago, has led to extreme violence and poverty within those neighborhoods. Over 93% of the South Side is home to African American residents with 40 to 60% living in poverty. This is a significant geographical, race, and intersectional issue that urban developers have been trying to fix for years, but with the wrong plans of execution. As stated in Planning Chicago, Englewood has been the target of numerous post-war planning ideas, including community conversa conversation, urban renewal, enterprise zones, TIFs, and most recently, the LISC, New Communities Program, NCP. Private investment and new population, however, remain ex exclusive. After the failure of 16 follow-on plans was the perimeter plan and the 1968 Mid-South Development Area Plan. They sought to address other pressing issues like overcrowding in schools, decaying housing conditions, and lack of mental health facilities with tools like affordable housing and health clinics. Englewood lost 30% of its housing stock between 1980 and 2000. As decline continued in Englewood and surrounding Southside neighborhoods due to abandonment and drug abuse, the city responded by demolishing the abandoned buildings. After the horrific rape of an 11-year-old girl whose body was found in a vacant lot in 1998, demolitions began to surge again, but more importantly, put focus on the neighborhood's decline through the media which forced politicians to respond. 
Mayor Richard M. Daley announced in 1999 the $256 million investment in the Englewood, Englewood neighborhood, including a $150 million investment for the Kennedy King Community College to replace the old shopping center. Although this plan was indicated by words and through media, it was never enacted by the planning and development of Chicago. From Garfield Boulevard to 76th Street and Racine Avenue to LaSalle Street, the dimensions of this project were about three square miles. Throughout this area, there is one grocery store, which is a Whole Foods, that was just put in by Sterling Bay. Englewood is around three square miles, so over two square miles of the residents are living in a food desert. Grocery stores allow residents access to healthy fo foods, cooking, and jobs. There have been many studies that show a correlation between healthy eating and overall happiness, less health problems, and a longer lifespan. Due to violence in Englewood, overall happiness would decrease the amount of violence within the city. Another thing that contributes to violence is poverty. Grocery stores employ around 33.6 people. The Food Empowerment Project states, one study of Chicago neighborhoods found that the death rate from diabetes in food deserts to be twice that of areas offering access to grocery stores, while the other conducted in California found that adults ages 50 and over from black and brown communities had doubled the diabetes rate of whites from the same age demographic. The researchers continue to explain the racial and health disparities by suggesting that the high-calorie foods most rarely available in food deserts put residents living in these areas at greater risk for diabetes in the first place and that having restricted access to healthy foods also make it harder for them to manage diabetes once they are diagnosed. Throughout this study, it shows that over 500,000 Chicago residents live in a food desert and 400,000 additional residents live in areas with predominantly fast food restaurants with no grocery stores nearby. Although this seems like a poverty issue, it is more of a racial issue because it is a majority of these residents are African Americans residing on the south and west sides of Chicago. Due to the previous urban planning projects being all talk and no action, this plan set forth will be the end of the mantra. With the help of Sterling Bay, Chicago Pace, and the Department of Urban Renewal, the South Side will have more economic opportunities, less violence, and overall better health and happiness. Approving this project would involve obtaining or following zoning maps, zoning codes, zoning amendments, zoning compliance, affordable requirements, ordinance, and more. Chicago Pace would be responsible for overseeing the project as well as implementing the program that allows for potential PACE participants to receive, process, and approve applications. In order to successfully utilize all aspects of the program's offer, it would be beneficial to have a legal department which oversees all legal and contractual aspects. Sterling Bay will be drawing up architectural and demographic plans that adhere to the City of Chicago's requirements, which are not met based on zones. Overall, this urban renewal project looks to change economically demographically and physically. The South Side has gone from slums to impoverished, racially segregated neighborhoods that allow for no economic prosperity. With this project, the hope is to bring happiness and success to these neighborhoods without displacement of residents and families. By utilizing abandoned homes and lots for the purpose of implementing grocery stores, new low-cost single-family homes and apartment complexes, it allows for little to no displacement. Grocery stores and local businesses offer jobs and economic prosperity that introduces a higher living wage and overall ways of value for the neighborhood through small steps in allowing residents to have a say in what they need, a larger, more permanent impact will happen. Although this project will take time, nothing great was ever built overnight.